Petri Wine brings you... The Taste Book of Gregory Hood. Tonight, the Petri, to bring you good wine, invite you to listen to the story of... The Forgetful Murderer. Another exciting story from the Case Book of Gregory Hood. And if you don't mind, I'd like to repeat something I've said before. It's simply this. The best beginning a good meal ever had is a glass of Petri California Sherry. Try serving for dinner and you'll know what I mean. That Petri Sherry is a marvelous wine. Just look at its deep amber color, so rich and inviting. And as for the wine itself, what a flavor. Petri Sherry has a flavor you know comes right from the heart of luscious, sun-ripened California grapes. And say, if you like your sherry dry like I do, you know, not sweet, Petri makes a delicious dry sherry, Petri Pale Dry. If you don't know which you prefer, the regular or the pale dry, don't buy one, buy two. Try them both. But remember, always buy Petri. <laughs> Well, it's Monday night in San Francisco, and it's time to keep our weekly date with Gregory Hood and his friend Sanderson Taylor. Tonight's rendezvous is at one of this city's favorite and most colorful meeting places, the top of the Mark Hopkins Hotel. Let's join them there, shall we? Harry Bartell. Hello, how are you? Evening, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Greg. Hello, Harry. Come and sit down. You're just in time to settle a fierce argument. <laughs> argument, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, company policy or private opinion? Uh, the latter. Gregory and I have been arguing as to what is the plural of mongoose. I say it's mongooses. And his boat has gone for mongoose. <laughs> now, what's your bet, Harry? Well, uh, I think I'd go for mongooses, too, Greg. Ah, you're outvoted, Sandy. Funk and Wagner will hear of it. <laughs> Now, you mustn't be an obstinate old mongoose. Oh, how did you get onto the subject, anyway? Oh, it came up quite logically. A little earlier on, Sandy and I were shooting craps at the apartment. He threw three double aces in a row. A double ace is better known as snake eyes. From there, we began to discuss snakes and the ways of killing them, and that was when Sandy made his fatal remark about <laughs> mongoose. You call that logical? You'll find, Harry, that Greg's logic is always a little involved. Well, I'll forgive that if you'll keep up his record of good storytelling. How's about tonight, yarn, Greg? Well, Harry, I think I should preface the story by telling you that last year I decided to open a small but select retail store. And I may tell you, Harry, that it took all of Greg's wiles and personal contacts to wangle the rental. Yes, we finally secured a location on Post Street near the St. Francis Hotel. On the night my story begins, Sandy and I were at the new place talking over the final plans with our manager. We sat there quite late, I remember, and it must have been after ten as we left the store and walked down Post towards where my car was parked. As we reached it, we noticed quite a crowd gathered outside a jewelry store. Naturally, we walked over to see what had caused the commotion. Well, hello. What's the excitement, I suppose, Greg? It looks as if someone's giving away nylons on the sidewalk. Let's go and snoop. <laughs> well, there must be trouble, Greg. The police are here. Yes, and prominent among them is Sergeant Barton. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, evening, Mr. Hood. I might have moved back there, there, please. Out of the way. Now, you've got to keep this clear. Huh. Doesn't take you long to smell out a murder, Mr. Hood. A murder? It's purely a coincidence that we happen to be passing, Sergeant. What happened? Star broken into. Jewelry stolen. Night watchman stabbed to death. Nabbed the killer? No. He was too fast for us. Made a clean getaway, Mr. Hood. Oh, can I come in and take a gander? Oh, Gray. Now, keep out of it. Let your curiosity alone for one. I'm afraid I've got strict instructions, Mr. Hood. If you call headquarters, I'm sure they'll authorize a pass, though. No, no, Sergeant, I won't bother. By the way, how's your wife all over the operation? Doing fine, thank you, Mr. Hood. Good. Good. Well, so long, Sergeant. Oh, night, Mr. Hood. Out of the way. Out of the way. <laughs> Wonders will never cease, Greg. You're actually walking away from the scene of a murder. Purely commercial robbery murders like that aren't in my line, Sandy. In any case, I'm not in the mood for violence tonight. Now, let's go over to the Lick Grill and rattle a few dice. No, not me. I'm going to hie me home to Mary and the children. Oh, you're a very worthy citizen, Sandy. Now, here's my car. Can I drop you at the bridge terminal? No, thanks. It's near. I'll walk. Good night, Greg. See you in the morning, Sandy. Uh, give my love to Mary. I will. Hello. Uh, 
Hello. Uh, did you get into the wrong car? I don't think so. You're Gregory Hood, aren't you? Yes. Well, that's what it said on the license card on the steering post. Uh, who are you? Toffee. Hmm? That's my nickname. Jump in and tell me where we're going, Gregory. Uh, listen, uh, you're sure you said Toffee? I did. Uh, then listen, Toffee. I'm the kind of a guy who's more than willing to string along with the gag, but before I say where we're going, I'd like you to do one thing for me. What's that? Please switch on the overhead light inside the car. <laughs> you want to make certain I'm not too repulsive, I suppose. There. Well, what's the uh, verdict, Gregory? Mm, move over, Toffee. We're going just wherever you say. <laughs> Sergeant Barton. Yes, Lieutenant Silvers. Anything from the lab reports on the jewelry store killing? Not a thing, Lieutenant. Never saw a cleaner job. Looks like we've got nothing at all to go on. Yeah, nothing but this. It was found at the scene of the murder. What is it, Lieutenant? Your guess is as good as mine. Looks like just a hunk of metal to me. The owner swears it doesn't belong in the shop, so we must assume the killer dropped it. Can I, uh, look at it, Lieutenant? Ah, sure you can. Yeah. Thanks. Hmm piece of metal, about six inches long, thicker than a wire, not much, sharp at one end, and a ring at the other. Yeah. Could it be a, a meat skewer, Lieutenant? Well, don't ask me, Sergeant. Three days since the killing now, and after exhaustive tests, all I've been able to find out is that the murderer dropped a watchet. Ah, uh, maybe I should ask Greg Hood to come in on this one. He was on the scene a few minutes after the murder was discovered, Lieutenant. Oh? Uh, take it, will you, sir? Police headquarters, homicide, Sergeant Martin speaking. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. You know what, Lieutenant? No, I don't. If I'd been on my toes, I guess I should have deduced from your conversation, but I didn't quite make it. What's happened? There's been another robbery killing. Sounds like the same guy down on market. Well, let's get moving and keep your fingers crossed, Sergeant. Perhaps he's left another clue for us this time. A clue that we'll be able to pick up. Handy, the display stuff is ready, the carpenters are finished, the interior decorator has finally okayed the hang of the last drape. I think our store can open tomorrow on schedule. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. If Hood and Company has to go into the retail market, it couldn't have a better showcase. Yes, as my eye roams over our newest domain, I feel quite happy. By the way, Sandy, look at that watercolor of James Cooper Wright hanging over there. Yes. The guy's a very great painter. Have you ever seen such a subtle and yet more exciting blend of color? Oh, I'm crazy about it. I've been ever since I first saw it. You know, I'm planning to buy Mary a Jimmy Wright original for her birthday. Ah, you're a man of taste, Sandy. If only you were worthy of Mary. Uh, <laughs> well, since we're talking of what is technically known as the gentler sex, uh, may I ask you if you've seen any more of that girl you told me you met the other night? Uh, what was her name? Taffy? No, no, Sandy. Her name was Toffee. Oh. Well, okay, I don't want to be an old snooper, but I am curious. Yes. Have you seen her again? No, Sandy. It's one of the darndest things that's happened to me yet. She just showed up out of nowhere. We had one of the most delightful evenings I've ever spent, and then she vanished. Insisted I'd drop her at a cab stand, if you please. Well, didn't you trail the cab? Sure, but he got away from me. Do you realize, Sandy, that I don't even know her name? <laughs> You're slipping, Greg. <laughs> yes, I... Oh, well, doesn't that be? The door doesn't open until tomorrow. Well, I'm sure it's Gino Carducci. Gino? Oh, you mean our night watchman from the warehouse? Yes, yes. I thought it would be a break for him to move in a little nearer to the center of things. Oh, hello, Gino. Good evening, Mr. Hood. Oh, right. <laughs> and how are you, Mr. Taylor? Hello, Gino. Come to look over your new empire? Ah, uh, that's right, Mr. Taylor. A fine place you have here. A fine place. You think you like being night watchman here, Gino? I thought it would be a nice change for you after the warehouse. Uh, Gino is very happy, Mr. Moose. All my life, I, I have wanted to be in the fashionable part of the city. And now, <laughs> you just wait until I tell my Maria about it. Excuse me, please. I will examine this door. Yes, make yourself at home, Gino. <laughs> Someone else at the door. <laughs> we really have built a better mouse trap, haven't we? <laughs> Uh-oh. Lieutenant Silver. Uh, probably wants a preview of the store. Uh, hi, Greg. Hello, Sam. Good to see you. Well, what do you think of our new place? Yeah, it's very nice. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Hello, Lieutenant. 
You look worried, Stan. What's on your mind? Uh, this series of robbery killings, Greg, is getting me down. No kidding. Three of them now, and we haven't got a decent lead. Are you sure it's the same killer? Certain. Pattern in each case is exactly the same. And that pattern is? Uh, stores broken into, stuff is stolen. Night watchman gets slugged. While he's unconscious, this dirty rat stabs him to death. That's the medical examiner's report. Strange. Your average thief doesn't kill unless he has to. Mm, sounds like a twisted kind of mind at work. And here's another thing. At the scene of each of the killings, the murderers dropped something. Look, I brought to the collection. See if you can make anything of them. Oh. Item one, plain linen handkerchief, initial with a C. No laundry mine. Well, that's a great help. Merely narrows it down to all the people in San Francisco whose first, last, or middle name begins with a C. I know, I know. Well, at least that puts Greg and me in the clear. Uh, what's the item uh, number two? Well, it's a hard-shaped piece of rubber. Oh, it looks like an earpiece of some kind. Yeah, it is. Police surgeon tells us it's an earpiece off a stethoscope. Ah, the mad doctor, eh? Well, that should give you a lead. Well, it hasn't. Greg, have you any idea how many doctors there are in San Francisco whose initials have a C in them somewhere? Well, I can imagine. And the third exhibit? This uh, funny-looking piece of metal. They found it at the scene of the first killing. Ah, it's not unlike a meat skewer. No, no, it's not that, Sandy. Honey, rings a kind of a bell, but I can't quite hear it. Well, then hang on to it, Greg, until you do hear it, will you? I'd certainly appreciate it if you could help me out on this one. I'm going crazy. Okay, Stan, I'll take it and brood on the matter. You can have it back for Exhibit A, but I'll see if I get any bright ideas in the meantime. But don't pin too much faith on me. This really isn't my type of case. <laughs> You ought to lock your car, you know. I always used to until that night I forgot. Now I leave it open, hoping I'll find you here again. Move over, darling. Well, where are we going? I think a bite of supper at the palace is indicated. The lights are so discreet there, admirably suited to your mystery and your beauty. Mm, my, but you're in great form tonight, Gregory. And uh, after that? After that, darling, we might take a drive up to Twin Peaks. The view from there is quite lovely. I doubt if you've ever seen it, Gregory, but uh, come on, let's go. Oh, you were actually truthful, Gregory. The view is beautiful. You're right, Tuffy. It's quite beautiful. You aren't even looking. Oh, yes, I am. My old father used to say that even the Taj Mahal in the moonlight didn't compare with the sparkle in a beautiful girl's eyes. Mm. I wish I'd met your old father. So does he. In the meanwhile, how's about his son? Oh, he's not bad. Darling. Oh, ooh. What? What's wrong, Toppy? What have you got in your pocket? The razor blade? Something pricked me. Oh, it must be this gimmick. See? How oh, fine thing, sir. Carrying concealed weapons. This isn't a weapon, my sweet. It's a vital clue to a murder case. The only trouble is no one knows what it is. I bet I know what it is. What? It's a thing for cleaning pipes. Oh, no, no, darling. The gadget you're thinking of has a much shorter spike, and it's got little spoons for scooping out the tobacco and all sorts of other doodads on it. My father used to use one just like this. He had it specially made. It was for cleaning out the, um, the, oh, you know, the middle part of the pipe. You mean the shank? Mm-hmm. Say, so you may be right at that. You're a bright girl, Toffee. You may have helped to solve a murder. There's going to be another murder very soon, Gregory, if you're not careful. Me? What have I done? You talk too much. <laughs> Hi, Stan. Oh, hello, Gregory. What brings you over to police headquarters? Did you get any brainwaves on that uh, steel gimmick I gave you? Yes, Stan. I went out with a beautiful girl last night, and she gave me an idea. 
Nothing very surprising about that. Don't be coarse, then. I'm talking about the metal object found at the first murder. But this gal suggested it might be a rather special kind of pipe tool. I checked on it this morning and learned two interesting facts. Mm-hmm. The gimmick was made of surgical steel, and there were traces of nicotine on it. So we narrow it down still further, Sam. You're looking for a doctor who has a C in his initials, and he's also a pipe smoker. He's either C or PC. You can take your choice, right? Not another murder, Sam. Yep, last night. You left a silver lighter at the scene of the crime, unless... Sam, you look powdered. Come on out and have a drink. Forget it for a while. How can I forget it? Look, Greg, you're an amateur. Sometimes you get a bright idea and solve a murder swell. And the safety and lives of a city don't depend on it. But it's different with me. Men are dying, Greg. Four men in the last two weeks. And the Lord alone knows where the killer's going to strike next or when. And what can I do? Nothing except... <clears throat> Homicide. Silver speaking. Yeah, Barton? What? Yeah. Okay, Barton. I'll be right over. Not another, Sam. Yes. Last night. Maybe early this morning. And hold on, Greg. It was your new store. What? They murdered your night watchman. <laughs> the rest of Gregory Hood's story in just a second. Just time for me to tell you the simplest, easiest way I know to make a good meal taste better. Serve that meal with a glass of good Petri wine. If you're having hamburgers or a swell pot roast for dinner, then you've just got to try it with Petri California Burgundy. That Petri Burgundy is a hearty red wine that's just made to go with any meat or meat dish. Personally, I think it's great. Now, if you're having chicken for dinner or maybe fish or seafood... Then by all means, try a Petri California Sauterne. Petri Sauterne is a subtle, intriguing white wine that's really something. Believe me, when you want a good wine, you can't miss with a Petri wine. Well, Greg, this one's really got me on the edge of my chair. So the murderer struck for a fifth time when he killed your night wife. Yes, Harry. Poor old Gino Caducci. He was one of my favorite people, and I was fighting mad when I heard the news. I called Sandy and told him to join me at the store, and then Lieutenant Silvers and I raced over to the scene. As the three of us stood there, I swore a silent vow that this was to be the last. You can't blame yourself, Greg. But I do, Sandy. While I was out having a romantic adventure with a mysterious girl last night, poor old Gino was killed, protecting my property. Now, I don't see that you could have done anything to save him, Greg. The murderer didn't write a postcard and say he was going to be here last night. I know, I know. Your men have searched the place thoroughly, I suppose. Yeah, now I've got him on a routine job that may lead us somewhere. Huh? What's that, Lieutenant? Checking on a list of every medico in San Francisco who may have the initial CP or PC. Did the forgetful murderer leave us any clue this time? Yeah, these few pages torn from an album. Sergeant Barton said they were lying beside the body. But they're not much help. No fingerprints on them. Uh, let me see them, Lieutenant. Yeah, here. See what you make of them. Well, meanwhile, I'm going back to headquarters. I'll be in touch with you later. Okay, Stan, okay. Well, what do you make of the pages, Sandy? Well, it seemed to be torn from one of those novels about the gallant young doctor. <laughs> and see, I feel too kind of disposed toward doctors at the moment. Let me see those pages. Huh? Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. You were wrong, Sandy. These pages weren't torn from a novel. They're loose sheets. They've never been bound. Well, what does that tell you? I think it tells us where to look for Dr. P.C. or C.P. Well, well, who are you calling? Joseph Henry Jackson, book editor on the Chronicle. I think he can help us. Chronicle? Uh, Joe Jackson, please. I hope you're on the right trail, Greg. Yeah, so do I. Hello? Uh, Joe, this is Greg Hood. Hello, Greg. Listen, Joe, I'm in a jam. I need some help. Oh, now, look, Greg, I'm a respectable married man. No, no, I... no, no, not that kind of a jam. I need your professional help. <laughs> That's different. Now, what's the problem? Am I right in thinking that sometimes book reviewers like yourself are sent unbound pages on a book? Mm-hmm. Yes, Greg. They do that occasionally. When the regular copies won't be out far enough ahead. Personally, I wish publishers would do it more often. I see. Another question, Joe. Do you have a reviewer who covers medical books, someone whose initials might be CP or PC? Oh, we have so many part-time reviewers. Let me see. Yes, Greg. There's a Dr. Christopher Partington who's been working for us. Have you ever met him, Joe? No, he's never been in here. We send stuff out to him and he mails a copy back. Just a minute, I'll check the address. What is all this anyway, Greg? Well, Joe, you're well known as an authority on factual murder, aren't you? True. Murder's a hobby of mine. Why? Well, Joe, don't look now, but I think you're just about to solve a murder. Well, 
Miles Handy, this is the house of Dr. Christopher Potting. Yes, yeah, very nice, too. You know, it's pleasant out here in the marina. Yeah. Aren't you going to ring the bell, sir? Not since the door is unlatched. Surprise is always an advantage when you're dealing with a murderer. You really think he's your man? Well, the evidence would point that way. Come on, Sandy, keep your eyes open. This guy probably knows all the answers. I don't like open doors. This might be a trap. We'll soon see. You should have called Lieutenant Silver. No, no, Sandy. Since poor Gino got killed, this is a private battle. Here's the living room. Mm, it's empty. So recently occupied by a pipe smoker, you will notice. Well, I don't see any pipes lying around. Look at that ashtray. Lots of ashes and burned matches, but no cigarettes. Yes. Who is in there? Oh. oh. Hello, Gregory. Toffee! What on earth are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you that when you tell me how you tracked me here. Uh, well, I, I have my methods. By the way, Toffee, let me introduce my friend, uh, Sanderson Taylor. Well, how do you do, Mr. Taylor? Well, how do you do, Mr. Uh, Mr. Since your friend has tracked me here, he really should be able to tell you my name. While he's thinking about it, I'll go and get you both a drink. You look as though you could use one. Quick, Sanders, Grant. Huh? Get the number on that phone, slip out of the house, and go to the nearest public phone and call here. Ask for Dr. Christopher Pottington. Oh, I get it. That'll smoke him out uh, without your having to mention it. That's a good idea, Grant. And then I'll come right back. Right. Oh, I have some sherry. Will that be... Oh. Where did your friend go? Uh, out for cigarettes. We wanted some. I didn't notice any here. Oh, I'm a shocking hostess, aren't I? You like some sherry, Gregory? I'd love a glass. Toffee? Yes? Do you live here? Sure. With Dr. Partington? Yes. Here's your sherry. Thank you. Toffee, have you been reading about these night watchman murders in San Francisco? Yes, Gregory. I've been devouring the newspaper reports. Why? They're most unusual murders. The killer always leaves a clue. Now, these clues might be deliberately false ones, but I think not. I think it's a phenomenon a psychiatrist might enjoy. A murderer subconsciously compelled to betray himself. You know, Toffee, they say that absent-mindedness is never accidental. It's always the result of subconscious desires. Do they? Gregory, darling, you're being dreadfully serious. I feel dreadfully serious. You see, an old friend of mine was murdered last night. Excuse me. Hello? Yes, speaking. Who's this? Oh, well. That's funny. He hung up. Oh, well. He asked? For Dr. Christopher Partington, didn't he? Did he? And you are Dr. Christopher Partington, aren't you, Toffee? It's not a common name for a girl, but I've heard of a few others. I've heard of Christopher Partington Candy, so that your nickname of Toffee was another clue, wasn't it? Gregory, darling, I'm afraid I'm losing my illusion for you. But go on, it's fascinating. I've known of women who privately smoked pipes, too. That was another clue you gave me. And women doctors are commonplace these days. The subconscious is beautifully tricky, isn't it, Toffee? Even while seeking to betray you, it left a series of clues pointing to pipe-smoking Dr. Partington. All misleading factors not to be associated with a beautiful girl nicknamed Toffee. You're very silent, Dr. Partington. I told her not to, Greg. I kept telling her not to kill those people. But she wouldn't listen to me. She was a surgeon, you know, and she loved to use a knife. And it was so easy for her to fool a night watchman. She went right on killing. So I had to try to betray her. That's why I waited in your car that first night. I thought I might be able to help you catch her. Her? Who? Cassie Peters, she's bad. Very bad. She kills people. Cassie Peters? C.P. Holy smoke, don't tell me I figured this out all wrong after all. Where is she, this, this Cassie Peters? Here. Here in me. 
inside of me. We use the same body. She's dead. I hate her. I did so want you to catch her, Grace. It's all right, Tuffy, dear. I've caught her. Then lock her up, Grace. Please lock her up. Promise you won't let her do those things anymore. You won't, will you, Gregory? Don't worry, Tuffy. We won't let Cassie Peters kill people. Not anymore. Ever. I swear, this is the strangest case you've ever told me. And the saddest. Five innocent men, including my old friend Gino, murdered in cold blood. And yet you can't hold that girl morally responsible. She never went to prison, of course. No, Harry. She was obviously an insane schizophrenic. A 1946 Jekyll and Hyde. She wound up in a state institution. Oh, kid. She was just a psychological misfit. Darn it, Harry. It was a miserable case. You know, Greg, there are times when I'd sure hate to be in your shoes. Yes, Harry, it wasn't easy to take. But as my old father would say, when you cry over a woman, there's always another woman ready to wipe away the tears. Now, you can't dismiss it that easily, Greg. When you fall, I know that you fall, but good. Yes, Harry, you and I were the kind of fellows who decide they like something and... Well, that's that. That's right. I'll never forget the night I... Oh, but you don't want to hear about it. But I do. The night you what? The first night I... You sure? Of course. The first night I tasted Petri wine, I said, that's the wine for me, and it sure is. I should have known. Yep, Petri wine is the wine for everybody, because it's good wine. It's got to be. Look at the long years of skill and experience that go into its making. The Petri family has been making wine for generations. Wine making is their heritage, a heritage handed on down from father to son, from father to son. So you can see why the Petri business has grown and grown so that today the Petri family are America's largest independent winemakers. Yes, the making of Petri wine is a family affair, and the Petri family has every intention of keeping it just that. So you know the name Petri on a bottle of wine is more than a trademark. It's the personal assurance of the Petri family that Petri wine is and always will be good wine. Well, Gregory, what story from your casebook have you lined up for us next week? Next week, Harry, I'm going to tell you of an odd adventure that Sandy and I had as we were flying to New York a few months ago. It concerns a southern colonel, an unusually attractive girl, and an elusive piece of ice. I call the story The Double Diamond. See you next Monday, Harry. Book of Gregory Hood is written by Dennis Green and Anthony Boucher. Original music composed and played by Dean Fossler. Gail Gordon plays the part of Gregory Hood, and Sanderson Taylor is played by Howard McNear. The Petri Wine Company of San Francisco, California, invites you to tune in again next week, same time, same station. The casebook of Gregory Hood comes to you from our Hollywood studio. This is Harry Bartell saying goodnight for the Petri family. For a solid hour of exciting mystery dramas, listen every Monday on most of these same stations at 8 o'clock to Michael Shane, followed immediately by the casebook of Gregory Hood. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.